Welcome to Buy Time. I'm Jacob DeGate. It's now my pleasure to be joined by Chief Ken a Email uh, from Bayou Cane Fire Protection District, and we also have Mike Palmer here, uh, also from Bayou Cane. Thank you all very much for, for joining us. Good Thank you for having us. All right. Uh, it's always a good time to talk fire safety because it is so important. So uh, I know you got some, some tips for us. Can you tell us a little? Yes, sir. Uh, well, it, it's spring, finally, mm -hmm. we think. Uh, and that means people are going to be barbecuing more. And, and another thing we'd like to talk about that a lot of people don't think of is, is everybody's boiling stuff right now. Sure. And um, w although we don't see a lot of fires as a result of boiling crawfish or any other type of seafood, the potential for a severe burn is there. Um, we've had issues where people have emptied the boiling pot. It was a little too soon mm -hmm. and, you know, second and third degree burns on ankles and legs. So we just ask people to be mindful of that kind of stuff. And, you know, uh, as much as we'd love to join you for your weekend boil, that's not the way you want to <laughs> exactly. see us. So uh, as long as we can keep that straight, we'll be good. Sure. Yeah. Don't do like me and, and put it, uh, the pot right over uh, the boiler right over the wood uh, deck. You yeah, know, right? that's, that's yeah. not a good problem. <laughs> it can, it can uh, catch fire quick, but sure. uh, and, just and, a little char. And, and with grilling, um, our biggest thing we see, we have a lot of apartment complexes in our district, and, and we do a real good job of uh, explaining to the residents that, you know, if you're going to have a grill, it can't be out. You don't, we don't want you grilling on your balcony. We don't want you grilling within 10 feet of your building. Um, and the other thing we see a lot of times is, and, and this is nothing intentional, but uh, sometimes people will empty their coals thinking they're completely out. They put them in a dumpster and about an hour later we're, the, we're out there sure. trying to extinguish the fire. So, you know, just a little common sense goes a long way when it comes to things like that. Now, uh, I know it, it's been a little while since we have some, some rain. Does that, uh, I guess, also raise the, the level of, you know, potential for fires? It, it, it does. It, it keeps us a little more aware than normal. Um, we follow the state fire marshal guidelines. If they issue a burn ban for the parish, uh, then we obviously follow that. Um, one of the, the hardest things, and it's a little bit easier now, but a lot of times burn bans will be issued during our sugarcane harvest. Mm -hmm. And the hardest thing in the world is to explain to somebody you can't burn, but the sugarcane fields can burn. Sure. Um, and that's just the way it is in the state law. Since it's considered an agricultural thing, you can burn. So it just makes it a little bit more difficult sometimes for us to explain that to people and get them to understand that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's just it's for overall safety. Uh, we're more fortunate than some of the northern parts of the state. They, they go through drought conditions a lot more often than we do. Um, and they also have the potential for more wildfires. We don't we don't have a lot of woods down here, so sure. so we're okay when it comes to yeah. that. Just a, just a few marsh fires, but that yes is yes. And we were lucky this year. Either the the, the rabbit hunters decided not to burn the marsh this year, <laughs> um, but we didn't we didn't see near the, the marsh fires we do. And that's another thing we we end up taking a lot of phone calls because if you're from Terrebonne Parish and you drive any part of Highway 90, mm -hmm. you can see the smoke from a sure. really, really long distance. And it just, it concerns a lot of people that, hey, is the fire here? And a lot of times we have to find out from other agencies, no, it's in Raceland, or no, it's a little bit further east or west of us. But it's something we keep our eye on. And when we can extinguish them, we do. And, and sometimes we just make a line in the sand and say, okay, the fire's not going to burn any further past this. And mm -hmm. uh, we see that a lot. The backside of Ellendale Country Club, it, it, it it's, it's more easily threatened than people realize it can be. So uh, we watch that, and we also watch the, the side behind Rouse's pretty mm -hmm. vigilantly. Um, but I, I don't know if now that that big area of the marsh along Savannah that used to burn, it's now parish property, so, sure. so maybe that's helping. We're not complaining, by <laughs> no means. Well, uh, let's see. Another thing, uh, I guess, for fire safety is... Michael asked you, uh, I know about smoke detectors. Uh, I know that y'all got recently got a, uh, a big donation. Can you tell us a little yes. bit about that? Uh, working smoke alarms are still the single most important thing you can do for, to save yourself and your family in the case of a fire. We participate in the uh, program with the state fire marshal. Uh, it's called Operation Save a Life, where we come out and put the smoke alarms in your home for you. Um, but we recently got a donation of over 100 from Lowe's. Uh, so that was a real nice thing they did for us and the uh, citizens of our district. So um, we're capable now of helping more people uh, get smoke alarms in their home. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Now, uh, let me switch back to you, Ken. I, I know we were talking before the show about uh, some new things that you did during Mardi Gras. I want yes. to get to. We've got about um, a minute and a half okay. left or so. Um, for the first time in the history of Bayou Cane, we were able to staff multiple units with paramedics that had ALS capabilities, advanced life support capabilities. So um, we were able to do that for every Mardi Gras parade in Terrebonne Parish that was in our district. Uh, so we were real excited about that. It was the first time we, we were able to do that. And, and it's eventually going to tie into, I guess, the biggest thing on the horizon for Bayou Kane is we're expanding our EMS capabilities. Um, so it's a work in progress. And, and as soon as we get everything in place, we'll be more than happy to come sit with you and explain all that to you. Uh, but we were excited about it. It was something that um, I myself uh, rode out with some of the guys for a few of the parades. And, and we saw firsthand the difference it made. Uh, we had a couple instances where people needed to get taken off of floats for medical issues, and we were Johnny on the spot right there to be able to do that. Um, so we were proud of the fact that that's just another level of service that, that we brought, not only to our, our, the citizens of our district, but you as well know, there are people from all over sure. the state, the country even, mm -hmm. that are here for Mardi Gras, and they, they got to, to, I guess, experience and have the benefit of that added level of protection. So we were excited about that and, and hope to just continue to expand on that. Well, it sounds great. We, we thank you all for coming on. And like you said, you know, there, there's other areas besides fighting fires that you all do. And it's Absolutely. great that, uh, you know, those capabilities that you have. I'm glad to have them on hand for Mardi Gras. Well, thank you for having us. And Thanks. anytime you need us, let us know. All right. Stay tuned for more right here on HTV.